What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Game Addicts Podcast, the podcast about the modern and retro video games that we play and collect. I am your host, Brenda, right along with this podcast player, too, Mike. How's it going, guys? This is the first podcast with our new setup. It is. I have spent some monies. I now have Lots a full monies. podcast setup. I've got my Zoom. If anybody that listened to the last episode of JIC, uh, I use that as an audio interface instead of using my old uh, USB mic that I got for that. And so I'm just kind of mucking around with this. We got a new setup. So this is going to be a little different for us because we are so used to just kind of being like laid back and way back here talking like this. But now we got a setup. We got to be prim and proper. We have yeah. to talk into the microphones and we can't like be tapping our table like, you know. <laughs> Which you're going to hear a lot from me. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it's all going to be new. So this is all stuff that we got to train ourselves not to do. I'm a little bit more like intuitive to try and like remember not to do stuff, but you might still hear my chair squeak. <laughs> yep, right, like that. So you might hear the cat meow. These microphones are really powerful. But this is awesome because this is like the first step into where we're going with this whole thing. We're going to be taking, this is the first, uh, well, okay, maybe I should say this. This is going to be the last Game Addicts podcast on the Journey into Comics main feed. Yes, it is. Yeah, we are no longer going to be featured there because uh, I mentioned on the last episode of GIC that we are launching this not to be like under the umbrella of JIC, but like another pillar of uh, like our podcast empire. We're going to have JIC, we're going to have Game Addicts eventually. Uh, that's my, my that's my hope for the other shows too, is to get them on a mobile platform where right. they can be listened to whenever. And this is also going to be the one that we're going to be eventually experimenting with video. Yes. So that's going to be fun. Whether uh, first I'm thinking just hey we'll start it off slow. Let's do just let's just record it and see how it goes, and we'll throw that up. And then once we get good at that, let's go live stream. Yeah, <laughs> I was already working on that. Yeah, I mean things are definitely in the pipeline. Of course, we've had a little bit of an issue with branding because we didn't brand everything back then. Um, but then again, it, it it's all just a matter of. Branding like a video game podcast is difficult because there are so many video game podcasts that start up. There's so many that keep going, and there's some that just like do like two or three episodes and they just quit. They don't have the, they don't have the the drive and the force to keep going. And they're on like phones. <laughs> the quality is horrible. There you go. Yeah, just phones. But I mean, that's the thing though is that that's what's cool about podcasting. Yeah, it, it's all varying levels of like quality because all you need is a cell phone, right, to be able to get your voice heard. And then if you like it, you get some people listening. People, some people will just listen to it because it's something new for them to listen to, and then they'll go, you know what? I really want to do this more. So then they they eventually do this. I wanted to do like this setup, like over a year ago. I wanted to buy it last year, but it wasn't possible. Now it is all here. This is the first episode with this new setup with our new RSS feed, which it, hopefully it's up on iTunes by like time I post this. Uh, it might not be, but it will be on the actual like Podbean feed. So it'll be there. It'll be over on JIC uh, as well, and it'll be the last one for over there. They basically just kind of cross the audience and said, "Hey, go check out our feed over here." Right. And then um, I'm gonna work on getting like the older episodes up on our YouTube, and then uh, that'll get built up with actual video content, whether we're capturing and doing gameplays or we're doing uh, like capturing this. Right. With that being said, I've had some pickups. Yes, you have. I'm going first this time. So you got a lot more than I do. You know what? It, but I didn't spend a whole lot on it. I think altogether for these, I spent like thirty bucks. That's pretty good. Um, and really, they are just mostly games that some of them I had before, and then I got rid of when I sold like some collections and stuff. Uh, I've told that story before. Technically, it's not thirty dollars. When you got that one game in there, did sixty. We'll talk about that. <laughs> so for one of these was free, and I, I don't think it was this one for three dollars. I got Siphon Filter, the Omega Strain on PS2. Now, I have this game. It's, it, it, it's right over there. You can see it. However, the case is a blockbuster case because I bought it for $1 on eBay back in the day. And I got it shipped to me probably for 6 or $7. <laughs> That's yeah. the way, this way they would do it. But you know what? This I replaced the case, and then it has a cool little slip cover. It's, you know, it's beat up, but it's just it adds character. And that's a, That was an online game, and it's actually pretty fun. It has a pretty fun single player. It plays like a PS2 version of Siphon Filter. Hmm. No, action game. Um, next up, Family Guy the Video Game. This one was free. It says $4, but it was free. For some reason, they just said this one's free. I got this one back in 07. I never completed it. It's like a 
the camera's fixed and you're running around and oh, you're okay. hitting stuff and there's family guy humor in it. Uh, they have another one that is focused on Stewie and Brian called like road to multiverse or through the multiverse. Yeah. I don't know. Never played it, but I mean, this one was funny. Like when I was playing it back then, I honestly got it just because I had it. Right. That like literally is the only reason why I bought it. Rented this game back in the day. The Getaway. The Getaway. This is a first party uh, Sony release. This is set over in England. It's like a Grand Theft Auto run around and shoot stuff type of game. I remember playing it. I don't really remember a whole lot about it. I remember you could go inside buildings without load of times. Huh. Certain buildings. Though. Certain, yeah. It's like most buildings are like, I can't get in here. And then you can just walk up in the police station and say, hey, what's up? And then we're just going to shoot everybody. <laughs> you know, I can't remember if you could just like go off and shoot people or if it was certain like story events. that Like like when you had to go somewhere and all of a sudden people started shooting, that's when the guy got his gun out. Huh, I maybe. think that's the way it was set up. The driving kind of sucked, if I remember correctly. It was very tight. It was kind of like when you first go like to driver. play. Driver? Well, Driver was more arcade, though. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, ta- I'm talking like a little bit more like when you first go to play Gran Turismo for the first time, and it's like really tight, you know, and it's like you got to get used yeah. to it. Um, they made a second one of these, which I never played, but it's about the same price. I might pick it up. <laughs> WWF SmackDown, just bring it. I now have a goal. I want to get every single WWF slash WWE branded game as far as like the SmackDown series and then the SmackDown versus Raw series. I want to get them all on the PlayStations, like all of them. Which surprisingly, I don't have that many more to go. I mm. got a, I've got the first two on PS One. I've got O Six O Seven on PS Two. This one is the thirty third one, so I need to get the fourth one. Uh, I thought I had I thought I had Here Comes the Pain. Did I lose it? Did I no, do I no longer have it? What happened? Oh no, dude, that's like my like my one of my favorite ones. I'm sure you have it somewhere. So live here on the podcast, I'm freaking out because I could have swore I had that game. Oh no. <laughs> you probably have it. You just probably set it down somewhere. I got this was my second game I ever got for PS2. <laughs> um I got this the day the night I got my PS2. Because my my PS2 was the Gran Turismo 3 bundle. So I got Gran Turismo and then I didn't get a memory card with it. So I'm like, I can't save anything. And then <laughs> yeah. my dad's like, because I think I got it for like my family Christmas that, like that year. Like not just like my home Christmas. It was like, oh, let's go to grandma's. And that's where I got my big one. And then it was like, I want to go. I want to go like tomorrow and pick up this and that because I got Christmas money. Right. He's like, no, no, we're not going tomorrow. I'm like, I want to go tomorrow. And she's like, he's like, no. I'm like, I want to, I need a memory card. I need to, I need to pick up another game. He goes, you have a game. I'm like, but I can't save it. <laughs> And then he finally said, fine, here. I'm like, he goes, open the damn thing. And it was this game and, and with the memory card. <laughs> I originally wanted GTA 3. Um, actually, my buddy was getting GTA 3. I was going to get MGS 2, but they were out. And so I had uh, I had a list of like, if you, don't have G- if, you don't, if you don't have MGS 2, then get the wrestling game. If you don't have that, then go ahead and just get GTA 3. Because my right. buddy was getting it. And back in the day... What did you do? You like your buddy got a game, you got a game, and then you swapped. Yep. So, um, this oh, the good old days. This game, the the commentary, horrible, <laughs> plain horrible. It should. I wish I I don't I can't remember if you can turn it off. This was the first SmackDown game that had actual like visual and like entrances. The ones on PS One just had like a screen that played the video, and the guy was like walking. Right. Um. Yeah. A lot of memories playing this long ass load and save times unbelievably long like you could go take a crap and come back and still be going Assassin's Creed's Assassin's Creed Bloodlines PSP got this uh, This I'm not sure if it was just because it's greatest hits the other prices on this were like double the price huh. it says 6 bucks the other, the other ones were like 11, 12 so I'm like and it's probably I mean it's just like what they do they get they've had him for a long time they get that one in that was the proper price that could be you know but see and that could be but I you know, honestly I don't care about greatest hits anymore if it's greatest hits I don't care I just but, want I just want the game yeah it's just like I passed up I, I passed up so many PS one games because of greatest hits because I was like not collecting greatest hits and now it's like some of those games I still can't find all the games that I should have bought before I had a PS one I should have bought like Legend of the, Dra- the Dragoon that I cannot find anywhere in town. Yeah, dude. Like, I got so lucky 
um, with some guys at work. Uh, I think it was Ray gave me Parasite Eve 2. No, I gave you Parasite Eve 2. He gave me Parasite Eve 1. Yeah. Uh, you gave me Parasite Eve 2. I bought Legend of the Goon before I started collecting. I yeah. Fa- I found it at a game exchange for like 10 bucks. I know, that's what it was the last time I saw it. It was 10 bucks at the replay, and I can't find it. And then you haven't seen it since? Nope. Of but, course, that's how it goes. You know, there's there's specific games that's like, I have to have this game, and then you never get it. Again, you never see it again. Last two. Uh, more modern games. Xbox One, Sunset Overdrive, 8 bucks. This mm. got released, uh, was it two years ago now? 2014. Mm. So, yeah. So, yeah, it came out a year after. This was like one of the first uh, big... Uh, pl- uh, exclusives, of course, made by the guys that, guys that over there at, at, at Insomniac. Looks like a mix between like Ratchet and Clank and like that one uh, Jet Set Future Radio, uh, Jet Set Radio Future, like the skate game on Dreamcast. Yeah, looks like a mixture of those. I mean, I, I wanted to play it, but I didn't want to play it for sixty bucks. Lastly, the order eighteen eighty six, eight bucks. Yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, you, you were there when I got it. I was I was looking for this when I got all the rest of it. Couldn't find it. And they, you found it up there. They had, or were, they were repricing it. Yep. Uh, I've heard this game is cool but short. And basically, I think a lot of the negativity about it is that they hyped it up to be this next big shooter. And it's more of a story with some shooting. Yeah, but the story is really short. They said it's like seven to eight hours. And that, that doesn't bother me. That no. doesn't bother me at But for all. a $60 game when they were hyping it up, you know, they hyped it up really big to be like, oh, this huge game, this could be awesome. So many people nowadays, they, they just expect the game to be 20 to 60 hours. So, yeah. Um, speaking of 60 hours, there's another game I got and a game that you got. Yeah. I got mine. I got my day one edition on day two. <laughs> then you got yours I think the day I got after. the collector's edition for the deluxe was the it the deluxe, deluxe pack edition? for two two days after so I, I picked mine up and didn't really I think I played like a half hour of it because of how long the updates took yes yes and which is weird that I had a smaller update than you I was like a gig or something yeah smaller. but I weird. and it's not like I have any extra content on my game even though I bought the deluxe one, there was no additional content. It was still the same state, size file of game on my PS4. I don't know. So it's it, weird. It's weird. Um, the game we're talking about is Final Fantasy 15. Yes. Been, you played it more than me. I haven't played it in two weeks. Last time I the last time I touched it, and that wasn't last week. It was the week prior. It was in, I played it on Sunday. I got, I got killed. Picked it up on Monday or Tuesday. Got killed. Got killed. Said, screw this, I'll pick it up in a minute, and then yeah, I've been too busy. I haven't gone back to it. Uh, we've had a couple of long conversations that we probably should have recorded. Yes, <laughs> we probably should have. Uh, but we, we can we can revisit those conversations. Yeah, we can revisit it. Um, so since I went on my whole thing and all my pickups, uh, I'll let you go ahead and take the lead. What do you think about this game? I, The gameplay, I think the gameplay is fantastic. Um, for their first open world like really open world, open combat system. It's fantastic. There are some niches here and there, like if you're fighting a flying creature, it throws the camera underneath your feet and you get blocked by your character. Those are things that can be worked out. I mean, that's something hard when you're doing a third person style lock on combat. It's just going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. But outside of that, I really enjoy the game. I enjoy the gameplay. I like the quest setup. I wish I wish that the quest would give you more story. <laughs> that's that's our big hit on this game. That's my big hit on this game. You've played it how many hours? Twenty seven. Okay, I'm about ten or eleven. It just. I like it. Okay, I, I, same with you. I like the gameplay. And once I get once I got used to it, it took me like a hot minute to get used to it to figure out the gameplay and I'm still having fun figuring out new things you know so the game so playing the game is fun my issue is with the story because it feels the world feels hollow the world feels they just kind of throw you out and you're just doing this and then you're going over here and you go over here to the next gas station and you're like hey and they're like hey go get this for me go do this and you go do it and you're wandering around and you're playing the game uh, as far as a story goes, I just kind of feel like it doesn't give you a whole lot. And I'm not talking like what and why you're doing. I'm just saying the world in general. It feels you're just there. 
There's no world building. It was just. I don't feel any world building. No, I don't feel like. And I said this yesterday to you that I okay, just take FF9 for example. You start off in Alexandria, and you what do you do? You run on and you talk to everybody. Yep. You you learn more about kind of like the state of things just in tidbit conversation, and then you leave and you go somewhere and they're like, oh well, we need to get out of here so we can go here. And then you get there and you learn about that place. And then they, they, they say, we need to get a ship to Limblum. And then you get there and you're like, holy crap. And then you go there and you learn about all this history just by talking with them. And you hear about like how the world works. Right. Just by going to places. I don't know how this world works. I don't know. I don't. It wasn't until the movie that we watched yesterday, The King's Life. Yep. That I even understood 10 hours in what these different countries and these different places are. Because I. I understand. Apparently, there is there's a place that you're from, and there's Niflheim, which is the Empire, right? I which is non magic. It's all tech. just tech. And then there's what t- uh, the the place where the princess is from. Um, it begins with a T. T- it's um, dang it, I know the name. Tuscan Raider. T- 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 <laughs> um. Ed- Denaray, Tesseray, Tesseray, or something like Tesseract. that. Tesseract. <laughs> it's a Tesseract. I still don't really understand that. And granted, okay. Actually, I, I just got to that. Actually, I'm on my way to that place so at 27 it, hours in. I'm starting to head that way. I'm not saying that I need to know everything about this damn thing, about this, about this, about the backstory, but I just kind of wish I understood more about what I'm doing and why I'm here and what this world is. Because when we watch that movie... There's more world building in that two hour movie in little dialogue than there is ten hours in this game. Twenty seven hours in this game. And it's so it's still that way. Still that way. There's a lot of a lot of stuff is left untold. It's like, okay, your dad like okay, let's go to well the Casa yeah. del Sol, quote like, unquote. Little, <laughs> little, like, like a little beach town. Yeah, a little beach town. So do you want to do like uh preface this with spoilers? So I mean far. this is this is literally like if you would do the main story this is about two hours in. So. We'll, oh, well, I mean, okay, but we will still just... You know. I'm not going to go into actual breaking of what's going to happen. I'm just going to say, like, let's say up to two hours where the game actually starts to take off where your dad dies. Boom. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's two hours in, so you'll get there. It's not that big of a deal. It's not like... But you don't know what's going on. It's just like your dad dies. It's the Empire. Now you Basically, have to do this. he sends you away. And then you, your car breaks down and you're completely here. So you're completely isolated from any other storytelling other than you get a couple scenes and then the, the peace treaty goes bad. The movie shows you all of that. The, mo- the movie actually shows you the peace treaty going bad and the destruction of Crown City and all that stuff, which but there's you one don't thing, get in the game. There's one thing, and, and, and that's fine because I don't need to see all that. Right. Maybe maybe would have been cool to see some news footage. From like them seeing it on TV of like some of the some of the destruction and that's what drives them to go back. You hear a little bit on the radio. There's there's quite a bit of radio chatter yeah. when it happens, but you have to like it, that radio chatter chatter only happens at that specific moment, mm-hmm. and you have to as you're on your way back to Crown City, you have to stop and listen to every radio, every little stop, like gas station, to really get what's going on. And, <laughs> I it, I don't need to see all of that. Right. I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't need to see that, but the way the movie started, and it gave you a little bit of history in the rundown between uh, Insomnia and Niflheim. Right. It gives you a little bit of rundown, and it, it, I just feel like this. That they, they just say, okay, you're going to go on this journey because you're going to get married. And it's like, okay, cool. And then... Well, he sends you off somewhere to get married. Mm-hmm. And then that's... Basically, he sends you away because he knows what's coming. Right, yeah. He knows that you know shit's about to hit the fan here. I just kind of feel like I wish that there was more background. That I know what they're trying to do, but then it's like they put all of it into that movie, so then you got to watch the movie, and then you understand a little bit more about the background. So then it's like, I wish I would have put some of that background in the game. It would make the game feel more. It's almost like you're supposed to watch the movie, and then here's the here's the part of the of the, of the story that you play, and I just kind of feel like that's bad game design. I, I feel like they should have just, as I said yesterday, make the game, put the story in the game. You don't need to, you know, we don't need to get the whole movie story. You, we just we, we we know it falls. Let's get some background, and then after the game is out, then let's go. Hey, you know that part of that story where we showed you? 
a little bit of, of like of the city falling. Here's the entire side story about that city falling, along with the King's Live guys, along with Nyx. Right, and Nyx is a such is such a much better character than <laughs> Nock. Like yeah. Nock's this young prince that really doesn't know what's going on, but Nyx like this super badass. And like you get his whole history of why he's doing what he's doing. Like you know what Nyx's priorities are. Nox is just like, well, I have to do this. It's not like I want to do this. It's I have to mm-hmm. do this, and he's conflicted. Oh no, I th- like. There's definitely a part of me that thought last night that that, that his story is almost is almost like a better worthy. It's better worth of like getting a game about where you have to take on like the royal power to stop the stop the bad guy. But if you do so, you're going to die and sacrifice yourself. It's right. like it's like a callback in a ways to the FF10 storyline where Titus finds out that he's a dream and that if they go through and they defeat Sin conventionally, he will cease to exist. But if they don't do it, if they do it the other way, you you know will die. So what does he do? He chooses himself. Right. He wants to he wants to save her. That's a such that's a much better way to tell a story. I mean, it's and that's a, that's late game. Oh yeah, that's like that's, that's like that's, towards that's, the last five four or five hours. Yeah, that he, of your, like that he finds it out. Yeah. I don't hate this game. I don't hate 15. I just kind of feel like they missed the boat somewhere with this story. They tried to, like I said yesterday, uh, a friend of, a friend of ours, Nick has said, he, you know, he claims that that capitalism kind of hindered and broke this, this game because they wanted to franchise it before they even had a franchise. They wanted to, they wanted to overstep and they wanted to have the series. They wanted, or the anime series. They wanted the movie. They wanted the game. And they wanted you to enjoy all of this, and it's like maybe they should have looked into that after they already had like the story set up, right? And then they could just add to it. <sighs> that being said, it's like, do I say that? Do I think people who like Final Fantasy sh- should get this? Yes, but with the caveat of know that you've got to do some other things. You have to watch that movie to really enjoy this, um, unless you just really, unless you really like the minimalistic uh, story approach. So a big thing that um, for me is I feel like this game. It's not a it's not a blockbuster hit. It's mm-hmm. a, it's not, but it is a stepping stone to a blockbuster hit. I believe that this is a good concrete step to say, okay, here's our basis. This is us trying to do a open environment style game. We now know what we messed up on. I mean, some of these side missions, it's it's like um, let's let's do WoW. WoW has a lot of side missions, like fetch it. quests. Yeah, fetch yeah, quests. A lot, a lot of fetch. There's a lot of fetch, but they also some of those fetch quests lead to a longer quest line that gives you all this back information about this and that, and you're like, it fills the world, and then you it gets so detailed. There's so much going on. You know, you get like the humans' background, the orcs' background, everybody's background, but this game has no background. You're just like. Hey, here you go. Here's what's going on. Run over here and get this. Oh, by the way, your buddy wants to see some chocobos. Oh, cool. That's cool. Let's go over here. Nothing's really defined. It's just there. It, it's just generalization. It's all. It's all I'm getting from it. And it's like S- Sid. Sid's very vague. Yeah, me and her dad used to do stuff together. Yeah, we lost touch. Okay. Elaborate, please. What happened? Show me some video of like you guys going out and battling some stuff and doing what Knox's doing. It's nothing. I want to complete the game, but I'm feeling like... I think you should wait until the massive update to fix Chapter 13. I'm actually stopping at Chapter 12, and I'm not finishing the game until I get my update. Yeah, I don't know when that's supposed to be coming out. Soon. That's what that's all I've heard is soon. Soon. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Final I'm fantasy. still trying to find a list of the territories. 15. Chapter 13. Update. Right here, live on the show. We're just going to look this up. Um, updates, fix its worst chapter that this was released on uh, this. This was released earlier in the month here. Um, to detailing plans for the future, free updates for the game. So these are not going to cost us anything. Um, first to come are changes to the game's thirteenth chapter, a lengthy and heavy criticized portion of the game. Um, director Tabata said that. Uh, they receive gameplay improvements to make it more uh, palatable for fans, like making the magical ring item more powerful. Other enhancements will be revealed closer to the patch's release. Later patches will focus on narrative, with more cutscenes filling in the gaps in some character storylines. This will uh, require localization and voice acting, so that's going to come later. Um, 
There's also plans for a new game plus that will allow players to carry stats over new playthroughs, uh, and uh, as well as options for different kinds of play styles, new bosses, and achievements also in the works. Yeah, so nothing as far as like when it's gonna come. Just yeah. probably they're it's probably they're kind of looking at a year of a year of supporting this thing. So we're looking at like um, it sucks because then it's like they. <laughs> It's, it's the same thing that sort of plagued Mass Effect 3 where they kind of like how people were really upset about the ending so the first first update had to in their mind like uh, add to the ending or fix the ending right so then that took away development time from other DLC so like they kind of hindered the development and made it longer for actual actual other DLC to add to the story so if they want to add to the story and do actual paid DLC all like it seems like all their early stuff here is going to be just fixing what's already there it's, it, now I, I want to say it's just not as bad of a fix as FF14 was when that first came out that game was completely and utterly broken and they like remade it from the ground up and then made Realm Reborn right so yeah I, I think I might have a, I have a list of like the cities but I don't have a list of now they're going through Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 3 never mind I'll just look it up later that's, that's upsetting Anyways, there's a lot of territories. Um, the Empire takes them all over to gain power. None of them which can use magic, only um, the king of Insomnia. From mm-hmm. Insomnia is the city. And, um, yeah, that's... It, it's, it's very vague. Like, there's nothing there. Like, you don't even know why you can use your powers. And you're the only one that can. It, but King's Life fills in all the gaps. It does fill in some of the gaps, and so if you're going to play it, definitely look at watching that. And the fight between, quote-unquote, Emerald. <laughs> the demon that looks like Emerald, the, yeah. It looks exactly like Emerald. Definitely inspired. Um, so, earlier this month, no, we haven't oh, had... Oh, wait, a... my pickup. <laughs> my one pickup. Oh, the other pickup you had. I totally forgot. Go yeah, ahead. I got No Man's Sky. It was 20 bucks. I was told that it was worth $20, and they're trying to work on it yet to play it we've been very busy yesterday we uh, went and watched a movie Rogue One yep which we will be talking about on the Christmas Day episode of JIC coming up mm-hmm. so stay tuned for that me and Nate are going to be breaking down that movie and kind of saying what we have got to say about it so if now, you're, yeah. is that the last <laughs> to pick up you had there's the only two that, I, that I've had at this you point you know what because like, I've been really slowing down as well because I got the only, like after September, I only got two games for the next two months, and then I got a small stack here, but thirty bucks. Now it's come on now. Most of the games I want are new and they're expensive, so we're a lot of the stuff budgeting. retro stuff that I want is expensive, so I'm not really getting into that. I'm really trying to like slow down on my retro stuff. I've got plenty of games. So if you want to go into this earlier in the month, we haven't had an episode since the in seven day episode that we did uh, back in November. We've kind of been busy holiday stuff come around. And then we decided to kind of wait and let all this event stuff happen. Of course, we had the Game Awards. We had PSX. Game Awards, they show some new stuff. Uh, they gave away some awards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a really cool show to watch, but I, there's not a lot that really interested me. The very first thing that they did is they came out and they gave uh, Hideo Kojima the Lifetime Achievement Award. He won an award for MGS5 last year, and, and Konami would not allow him to attend. Right. So he um, basically they made it a point. They really kissed his ass. I mean, I mean that in the nicest way. They they really hyped up Kojima and made him feel good about you know all the shit that he's kind of gone through. And Kojima accepted the award, and then said, "Actually, I've got something for you." And then they lowered the screen and they showed the trailer for Death Stranding, the second trailer. Of course, the first one was revealed at Sony C three. This game is going to be a PlayStation exclusive. It is uh, now his new studio, Kojima Productions is not necessarily Sony exclusive, but their first game will be Sony exclusive. Right. And I'm of course, very confused about this trailer. Me too. <laughs> me too. Just as confused as the first one. I, and you know what? I, I'm pretty sure that everybody else is too. I have no idea what this game is about. I have absolutely no idea. Definitely dark. It's dark. Definitely dark. It looks cool, but I have no idea what the hell it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, uh, it really looks like it's set in like the German, you know, World War Two. At first, and then you're like, wait, like... Like what is uh you know you know Guillermo del Toro and then you know um, 
what, what's his name? Mads. Mads Milkinson. Mads Milkinson, yeah. Yeah. Who was also in Rogue One. He played uh he played uh Jin's dad yeah. <laughs> last night. So that was pretty cool, but <sighs> no idea what this game is about. I've heard that they're they're not using their own engine. They're actually borrowing the engine that Guerrilla Games made for for Horizon in Death Stranding. Huh. And uh Kojima has said he hasn't really said a whole lot about it other than that this is going to be an action game so open world type thing I don't know I have no idea I don't know where they're going to go I mean the octopus on the tank was very I don't even know I don't know what this and, is and he bleeds black and then all of a sudden there's water at his feet I, I don't I'm know what this game is I don't know but this is definitely like like Kojima has the reins off him and he, and he can do whatever he wants you know? Yeah, and we, as we all know, he likes to hide things inside of other things. Inside of other things, things that are in there. <laughs> yeah, just... The other <laughs> thing that they... I watched the whole freaking show for this one thing, and they aired it near the end, the Mass Effect Andromeda gameplay. Actual oh, gameplay. Yeah. Looks great. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait for this game to come out. This is... Uh, we're going to be talking about it later, but this is my absolute number one looked forward to game. Huge Mass Effect fan. Uh, the guys that did the... DLC and multiplayer for the last entry are the ones lead, taking up the lead on this new entry, and you can tell that right. they that they really looked at what can we do to make this gameplay more action based, less cover based. It's the cover still there; you still have to use it, right? But let's like let's keep the action going. And they took the the more MMO style, like they brought into Inquisition Dragon Age, where each power has its own cooldown. That is now in this. So you can do your warp, and then you can do another power right, like right after it. Well, we'll see if they have a uh, in uh, those kind of games. They always have a uh, a world cooldown, so you can't like do warp and then the literally less than a second later do another attack. So you have to like there'll be a I think there'll be a one second cooldown for each one, but you'll have an individual cooldown for each power long term. It's called a world cooldown. Cool it looks fantastic. It looks I, good. I yeah. That makes, Mm. I'm looking forward to the oh. next uh, like data dump that we get from the Andromeda Initiative type thing. I'm I'm loving finding a lot, a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. I was expecting a release date, a hard release date, to get released for the Game Awards. We didn't get it. We still just got spring. That leads to a lot of people to think that that the game is going to be delayed. Uh, they're still like shooting for spring. However, uh, there's also some people saying that they're just kind of waiting until the new year to say March. You know, March twenty uh, first, I think, is what. Well, they might be also looking to see where everyone else wants to lay their games out and trying to get a date for themselves because you don't want to launch during, you know, Gran Turismo. You don't want to put something out with that. You don't or something that's similar to your game. You definitely want to make your Horizon own. Horizon comes out around the same time. Yeah. The Switch is going to come out around the same time, so I, I'm, I can guarantee they want a week, at least a week, to like all to themselves. They don't want to like set a date and then Horizon goes, "Oops, we got to put this date here," and then they're like, "Now they're going head to head." Even though we, even though you got two different styles as a game, you that's another triple A game, and you, they really, um, in my opinion, Titanfall two. I didn't play it, but it suffered from being around too many games. Other games, yeah. Because I mean, from what I'm hearing, Titanfall two, if you like the first one, this one's like shoot, is this is next level. The single player is absolutely fantastic, and it's a really fun game to play. And from what I'm understanding, it is one of the highest rated first person shooters of the fall, but it's not the highest selling. Right. Because it got released right around Battlefield, right around Call of Duty. They always, I don't understand why most of those shooters want to drop all at the same time. I, I mean, I understand why Call of Duty does it because they do it on the Marines' birthday. That's that's when they drop their games normally. So, you know, why? The other two need to like, okay, we need to move out of the way here. But they, they always want to do that. I don't understand it. I don't really, yeah, you know. Well, the thing is, is that for me, Battlefield and Titanfall were both released by EA, so they were like, they were hoping that there would be enough of a different audience for Titanfall, and there really isn't. No. Uh, another game. Now, let's see. Now we're just riffing. We're kind of going off track here, but uh, oh. another game that got like hindered by the time that it was released was 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 Watch Dogs. You know, Watch Dogs Two apparently is everything that Watch Dogs One was supposed to be. It's supposed to be great. But then it's like it, nobody's really playing it because, it, you know, they're they're too busy playing all the other games that came out in the fall. So yeah, <laughs> you kind of got lost in the shuffle, you know. Especially with Watch Dogs kind of being a little bit of a disappointment, uh, the, you know, like the first one that they were looking to make the second one. So, you know, 
kind of sucks. It is what it is. Uh, so after the Game Awards, we had PSX, which is the big weekend. They always try to do it. They have that kind of around the Game Awards. Big old weekend type thing. Yeah. And they do like a press conference. Press conference this year was cool, fun. A lot of newer, uh, you know, indie games Lots highlighted. Indie games. So that's really cool. I like seeing that because it's a different type of feel. And they kind of hit out with some AAA stuff. The Uncharted DLC looks great. Um, Chris Chloe is not in it. And not in Uncharted 4, so we get a story with her and Nadine, who is in, is in Uncharted 4. They kind of team up with this. Um, the Left Behind DLC for The Last of Us was kind of like a 90-minute, two-hour type DLC. So if that's similar, uh, then we may just kind of see another two-hour kind of story. Um, they had some older games that are being kind of redone, <laughs> re-released on PS4. Wipeout. Holy crap. That Wipeout looked, looks fantastic. That was... I cannot wait to play Wipeout. I played Wipeout like back in the day. Always had a lot of fun playing... Like, I don't really play racers anymore. Like, I played Wipeout. I played, like, the old school Need for Speeds, Jet Moto. I played stuff like that. And, I, and you know, like, I haven't really got into them. Yeah. I mean, I haven't, dude, bring back Jet Moto. Jet Moto was <sighs> awesome. I love Jet Moto. Make it a little bit better. Like, those controls for that was very clunky. It was. You like, can make you it better. Had, you, you can, can you can, but you have to really focus on what's going on. Like you got to be like, okay, I'm going to do this, and you got to do this button with this button with this button to make <laughs> the perfect turn around the the grappler pole. Well, you, like you, yeah, you need to put like it was it R one. You had to like link on to like a magnet type thing. Yeah, it's R one. Then you had to do the L, no breaking L two to slide your guy around, mm, and then you okay. had to do the lean left. Oh man, it was rough. It was, yeah, it was fun though. I loved it. It's fun. Um, what did I say? Crash. Crash, Crash looked Bandicoot. great. Of course, they're partnering with Ubisoft. I believe Ubisoft has, or is it Activision? I don't remember. Somebody owns Crash now, and they're partnering with Crash to do, they are completely remaking the first three Crash games on PS1 from the ground up on the PS4. They looked great. They did. Play, looked like they played the same. Apparently, for that, people saying that they played it there, it was great. I would love to go to PSX one day. One day, we will. One day. That was my tummy. I, don't know if I heard that. that. I wonder if the, if the microphone picked it up. <laughs> yeah, it did. That was some pretty loud. I am hungry, man. It was loud. I've had me like two cups of coffee and like a donut stick. Yeah. <laughs> a donut stick. And that was like around like nine o'clock this morning. I'm I'm like, I'm hungry. Dude, we're making like ground like ground turkey chili tonight. Ooh. Ground turkey is interesting. It is. It's it's has a similar consistency to ground beef. Yes, but it's different. It is. So, Parappa the Rapper, twentieth <laughs> anniversary edition. They're they're redoing that, re-releasing that old band. I don't have Parappa. I have um, Jammer Lammy, which is like kind of like the 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 sequel to it. I want to get Parappa. I never liked him. So. Never liked Parappa. No. It was always cool. Uh, I, I always thought it was like quirky. I really like quirky games. Of course, along with along with Parappa, the PSP games Patapon and Loco Roco getting uh, also. And a, uh, a HD uh, realization on the PS4. Really cool for that because there are, there are diehard fans of that. What are you looking at? I'm just looking. Gazing off. I am. GT Sport. <laughs> As you pull up GT Sport. Pull GT me. Sport. I tell you what. That was like graphic porn. Gra- like graphical it was. porn. I, see, if I just say the word graphic porn, it makes it, it's like, it's very graphic. But... For anybody who is a graphics whore in video games, you know, Polyphony has always been very, very great about making Gran Turismo look great. The gameplay, you've I haven't played them, but you've told me that they've kind of suffered. They haven't really been as good. Well, it's not really the gameplay is good. Like the driving is good. All the gameplay is good. What suffers is that the you can the online stuff. I mean, what I did when I had what was it four? No, five. When I was playing five, I literally just went on to the online thing raced the exact same race over and over again and got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars race and then bought all the big cars. There's not there's not a whole lot of stair stepping in it. You can literally jump from the low class to the S class almost instantaneously as long as you know what you're doing. This game looked fantastic. It does look fantastic. How much see here's the thing is that we are approaching a time in video games that they're gonna be able to create something on a higher fidelity than what our cameras can capture. 
Yes. So they're going to look like more real than real life, and it's going to get really crazy. For this game, I've already talked to the little wifey. I am allowed to get the steering wheel and pedals. There you and go. The shifter. So I'm going to full out, like, set up a little bitty <laughs> TV, you know, and a wee. Now, now they they did also they did also say that there's going to be a VR experience. There was an asterisk. I don't know if you saw it. It said certain cars, certain certain tracks. Yes. So not everything. You're not going to be able to play the whole game of VR, but there's going to be some a, a VR experience. Which it, you know I would prefer. I, I do want to get VR. I really want to get VR, but I'm still torn between what am I going to get. I I got a PS4 Pro, so I need you know right now I need to get the VR for the PlayStation. You know what? From everything that I'm hearing. That is the one to get right now. It's that, definitely the best priced. It, well, it's the best for the price because yeah. it, it is completely and utterly, uh, from what I'm understanding, impressive. Now, are you going to get maybe a slightly better and more enhanced inversion if you get the Oculus or the HTC Vive? Maybe, but the sheer price point of not only the VR, yeah. but then to have a rig to run it. Because yeah, it like, needs a really beefed up rig to run I, this shit. I've got a rig that's ready for it, other than the graphics card. And that graphics card, we're talking five, six hundred dollars. I mean, to invest in the Oculus Rift, it's eight hundred dollars for the Rift, and then another eight hundred, another eight hundred almost for a, a graphics card. Because you don't want to get the low end one; you got to get a medium one, like right in the mid range, and they're they're expensive. I don't know, man. I, I haven't even done any, any research on what you need, but. The, PlayStation VR is like good to go, like right out of the box. I know. You know, this chair needs some WD forty. It does. Next, the next podcast, you're not gonna be hearing this. Yeah, we'll be at my house. Yeah, but then the next <laughs> after that, <laughs> the one after that, WD forty. I'm not, dude. I put some WD forty on like the bathroom. I, I have an old bathroom door that's like still like original to this hundred year old house, because we would just close that door and it would just like it's really loud squeak, and I'm like. Tss, tss, and it's like, <laughs> open it and there's nothing. But they had one more thing. Of course, they had a big, long, full, full, awesome, cool thing here. But there's one thing, the last thing I want to talk about. The To re- me, that was the crowning jewel of that mm-hmm. entire PSX. Oh, yes. Because they faked us out with having Naughty Dog start the show. And they showed the reveal trailer for The Last of Us Part Two. I love the way that he was like, oh, I have something for you. Yeah, one last one thing. One last thing. I hope you enjoy it because this is for you. Now, I mean, we already knew about it, like after we were watching it, but yeah. Oh man, um, it's great. When Nick texted me, is to ask if I was watching it, and I was watching it, but then I had to turn it off and do something else. And I said I'll have to watch it later. He goes, they did a one more thing moment that'll make you very happy. And I'm like, there's only going to be two things that I can think of that they would be able to do. The first one was FF7, more FF7. I'm like, but 15 just came out. They're not going to like over flood that. They're not yeah. going to pull the rug out. I'm like, it's The Last of Us. They showed something from The Last of Us. Sure enough, I log on. Don't even get a chance to look at the stream again. I see the the trailer's already up. Yeah. Boom. I watch it, and I'm just like, I've watched that trailer so many times. Are we going to discuss it? Yes. Okay. So. You ready? Yeah. It's great. The It, it looks great. I really, really like the way that they are going off of Joel's decision to save her and making it out that the Fireflies are the worst people on the planet right now to her, basically. And she wants to basically annihilate the Fireflies. And that is great because it's you can tell when he says this thing, are you really going to go through with this? And she's I'm going to kill every last one of them. It's like, oh, you dirt her back. Theories are going crazy right oh, now. Oh, I guarantee it. There are theories that Joel was already dead, and that that Joel walking up to her and talking to her is up here. Think that she snapped? I don't think they'll do that. Well, that's like the semblance of her conscience. Like now, there's another one. We don't know what happened to Ella's mom. She was involved with the Fireflies, though. There was a promotional image that got released months ago. Uh, it was hidden, I believe, in Uncharted. It, was a, it said The Last of Us, and it showed a woman wearing a gas mask when she was pregnant. Huh. And Naughty Dog hides stuff sometimes in plain they sight. Do. You know? They do. And because uh, the, there was a Last of Us um, Easter egg in Uncharted 3. It was like a newspaper that talked about like that, like an outbreak. Right. So will we see Ellie's mom? 
will is she going to find out that the fireflies had something to do with her, got her killed, and then they were going to try and do something? Or this is also something that I've heard that maybe this is now four years later. You know, the fireflies are coming after Joel probably, kind of trying to track him down. There, there is a lot of conjecture that since Ellie's the main character, that Joel's going to be that Joel's going to be along for the ride, and at some point he, he's either going to get captured or killed. I I agree with that definitely, but I think that a lot of it's going to be that Joel's going to be in the background, and it's going to be him trying to rein Ellie back. Like, hey, no, you know, this is too far. You've gone too far. Pull it back. Pull it back. And she's just going to be full bore after it after the events because. Maybe they came and tried to kill Joel while she was there, and now she's like, you know what? Screw you guys! I want you all dead, so we can live in peace. There's also thought that, uh, and see, uh, Neil Druckmann has gone on to say that, like, it was almost a guarantee that they were going to get the cure, but there's also thought that maybe part of it might be that they didn't really know, and so they were just going to end up killing her. So that kind of leads like Ellie to think that well, these guys actually didn't know what they were doing. Maybe, but I mean, at the end of The Last of Us, you know, they they say that, you know, or Joel says, yeah, they said there's lots of people like you. Right. And, and, and there's yeah. not. Yeah, no. No, the lie. Yeah. And, oh man, I loved how they played off some of the little small stuff about her playing the guitar, him saying that he was going to teach her how to play guitar. Yeah. The, the song that she sang was was uh, was definitely appropriate. There, there looks like to be a bite mark on her neck, like she got bit. Of course, she's immune. Maybe, but, but then you get the blood dripping down her face. And well, I, that's from the cut. Right. There's a bite mark on her. And then uh, I love the, the, fact, the, the fact that she's coming off the high of just killing people. Killing, and then she goes into the song, yeah. and that leads into her singing. And then Joel, Joel walking in, and you don't really get to see his face, but it's just like, you know it's him. You know? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, the voice and everything. Well, I mean, but I mean, even before you get there, he's like, you know it's him walking through. He's got the revolver. And he gets in, and you see like the side shot, and yeah. then he leans up against like you know that. Did I don't know if you noticed, but like it, they look like one of the window sills. When she's sitting in the room, and there's a dead guy laying in front of her, and she's playing guitar, not the one right next to her, but the one next to that, it's open. It's yeah. Like, it's like the breeze is coming in. It looks like the window sill from the main menu of the first game. Huh. Yeah, well, like when we get done, I'll, like I'll show you the picture. It looks exactly the same. I didn't see. I didn't notice that. So that means like. I've really watched a lot, and I, I didn't see that. Oh, dude, it's cool because then it's like, from like, her perspective, sitting on the sitting on the bed, looking over at the windowsill would be where you'd be looking at it if you're selecting the main menu from the first game. Oh wow, that's <laughs> that's cool. If they did that, that's that's a neat that's a neat little callback. They're good. They're so good at making. You need good to games. play the Uncharted. I know. I do. I got so much to play. I know. And not I enough too. time. I know, but man, I'm telling you. 12 hour days, I mean, or 10 hour days, and I've been staying over helping. <sighs> not enough time. You've got to play Uncharted. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like. <sighs> The last part of that from the PSX, the awards, all the stuff, the trailers and all that kind of stuff. There's not really much at the award show that they debuted that I was really that interested in. Like, there's a lot no. of, like, some PC stuff. The Death Stranding thing was interesting, if not confusing. But I've got some news. I've got some Nintendo stuff. Oh, yeah. Stuff I don't know about yet. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I decided not to tell you. Uh, the NES Classic has sold 196,000 in the U.S. alone. That's good. That is insanely good. Of course, that also means that nobody can find them. Apparently, GameStop is supposed to be getting more before Christmas. People are trying to sell this thing for crazy amounts of money. It is unreal. Well, that's what they always do. Anything that's... Uh, that pisses me off more than anything. The day, whenever Final Fantasy VII does the thing where you know, and I, I know for a fact, they're going to release a PlayStation Pro Limited Edition... Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah. I hope it's a pro. They the limited editions that they've been coming out with have, so far have been the slim. I hope it's a pro. But if they do any of that limited edition, you know those stupid scalpers are going to be out there. I think they shouldn't be able to sell them on eBay. I think it should be illegal to scalp them if it's brand new, especially when you're selling a ticket. Oh, hey, look, here's my pre-order ticket. Ah, uh, did you hear about the law that 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 just got signed? No, it just got signed. Obama just signed a law that uh, that uh, is going to outlaw bots buying tickets. Like, 
automated programs buying like a bunch of tickets for, for resellers. Oh, thank God. Yeah. So, but is that going to cover? I mean, that, you're talking about tickets for like um, Supercross and all uh, that. It, well, it's going to cover sporting like like Ticketmasters, like anything that has tickets. Bots are not going to be able to be used to buy it. But like, that's the, but so, that's not going to affect our game. That's not going to help our gaming because you know it won't help gaming. But like you just mentioned the ticket thing, and I wanted to say that 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 just happened like last week. Hopefully, it bleeds into that because I I think that you should almost have to go through a test to get those. I mean, because the people that are buying that stuff that want it are diehard fans, and they know their shit. I think that would be a yeah, test. Well, I mean, it... but that you know, that's just me because I'm I I don't like having to work my whole schedule around trying to get this. I mean, I understand that there's a lot of Final Fantasy VII fans out there, and I'd have to do it anyways. But these scalpers, literally, that's their life. Is yeah, they, they sit just and they it. fuck everyone. To else me, over. it's almost like a necessary evil because it's hard to say like you have to take a test to buy this. That is like saying that, like, say if somebody wants to just just check it out, you're like, hey, you know, I know, I know absolutely nothing about this, and you, and you're like, where's Nanaki from? Right. And they're, like, <laughs> they're gonna be like, the hell are you talking about? Sorry, we can't sell you this game. Nanaki. <laughs> oh, who's that guy? <laughs> Other news here. Well, it's not news. It's a rumor. You ready for this one? What? Potentially some bad news. Wii U version of Zelda Breath of the Wild potentially canceled. That it doesn't it doesn't surprise me. And it doesn't really. It's not a shocker to me because it's it's, it's definitely. Um, the reason is switch. a technical problem and development. Apparently, they're having a problem getting this game to run on the Wii U due to its limited um, capabilities. Now, the game was originally announced for the Wii U. For the Wii U, and then they're going to bring it to the Switch. So now, I mean, if they're saying that. I mean, it's like, it sounds like they've just completely switched gears and said, well, it's coming out for the Switch. They've already canceled production of the Wii U. Earlier this month, they're no longer making any more new, more new Wii U right. in Japan. So, ooh, pop yeah, my nose. That was a good one. I wouldn't expect it to be that loud. Here's my problem. I understand it, but I don't like it because I feel like they promised this game to the, to the hardcore base your 10 million people who have Wii U's okay not every single one of them are going to be interested in getting this no most of them probably have already sold their machines a lot of them have but the fact is is that you promised this game to these holdouts they they bought a Wii U for this game some people did yeah and now they're going to have to go buy an entirely different machine that's bullshit if this if the Wii U the Wii U had 20 million people 30, 40 million people had Wii U's, this game would come out for that system. Yeah. Because you're looking at, um, what was the other one? Um, Twilight. Yeah. Twilight Princess came out on the GameCube. It also came out on the Wii. It was one of those cross ones. This right. one, This one is kind of supposed to be that same thing. But suddenly they can't figure it out. They can't work it out. I, <laughs> Which still surprises me with the fact that it is originally designed for the Wii U. Wii U. And that's what... We have a lot of the first gameplay and sites of it was on the Wii U. So you're telling me that you, uh, they had to have just decided it works on there, but they're just like, you know what? It runs better on it the Switch. It runs better on the it, Switch. We can do more on the Switch. It yep. can be more open on the Switch. Frame rate. They have no. Yeah. I guarantee that's what's happened. It it kind of pisses me off because that was like, I, I was gonna get it on both. I was gonna get it on yeah. the Wii U when it came out, and then I was gonna have it portable on the Switch. So. Hmm. I hate it. <laughs> this is the not, logistics, man. This 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 is just it pisses me off because I know the people who are going to be coming in and getting the switch, and they're going to get this game when it comes out, and a few months after the switch comes out, probably. Um, it's kind of way it's seeing. But I'm going to wait a little bit, get a little bit better. It all see, for me. It, it all depends on tax time. It all depends because we got a couple things that we got to take care of. At tax time, yeah, and I'm gonna be getting. You're gonna be getting some 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 capture stuff, but I'm also gonna get my own capture stuff. Yes. Yeah. So that way, because that way I can capture my older my older style games to you and all that stuff. Depending on how much I have left over, I might just get the switch. That way, that way, you know, we can sit here and we can talk about it. We instead of saying, "Well, I guess we'll have to wait until one of us can afford it." <laughs> well, it's not that affording; it's just the fact that you know there are priorities from for me. 
Yeah, I think though. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to check it out though, because I, 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 I'm I am aching for another Mario sixty four style game, and when I saw that that footage, I want it. Um, the other thing um, about the Switch is that they apparently, the rumor has it is that somebody has reported that um, From Software has Dark Souls three running on it. Yeah. Not just like oh it kind of works they're satisfied with it that means this thing and is... they're satisfied with it yeah that's a big deal yes <laughs> if, if that is true this this damn thing is going to be nice and all the all the things that i'm hearing put it in between the power of the xbox one and the ps4 the base not the 4k ones right um which is fine now i i had a conversation with nate about this and like he goes is it a is it a deal breaker that the system isn't 4k and i'm like no, we're just getting into the 4K thing, and the fact is, is that this is going to be a handheld console hybrid, and so yeah, the more I I think it's more impressive that you're getting a baseline level generation. What was game. the resolution on the the actual handheld portion? Is it nine something? I, I've heard 900, but I've also heard that they've kind of decided to scale it back down to 720. In uh, that, we'll and then I've heard that even though they're saying that the that the base of it doesn't have any extra power. That I've heard another rumor saying that when you put it onto the base, it overclocks it to 1080p and it has it has another fan in there to help cool it down. That wouldn't surprise me. So it, it's it's not that it like really provides it with a whole lot more power. It just allows it to run it without being so hot and uh, kind of overclocks it. So uh, at 720p, you're looking at a screen, you know, bigger than our cell phones a little bit. Like right. a tablet, that's gonna look fantastic. Are you telling me that 720p Dark Souls, 720p Skyrim on the go is not gonna look fantastic? Yeah, it's gonna look. Fantastic. It's gonna go. It's gonna look great. It and, would look even better if it was 1080. Sure, but I mean, you're talking about a handheld, modern console game on the go. I feel like this is uh, Nintendo's answer for the tablets. Probably, I feel like yeah. you know the tablets are are very popular now. Almost everybody's got a tablet. Almost mm-hmm. everybody has one. They they a lot of people play their games on there because as we know, phone games slash apps are now becoming a like major gaming mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Yep. So this is a very good answer because I have a feeling that they're going to be like, oh, by the way, on the Switch you could download all this, the games that you like on your on you know your, I, I, yeah. ISO or anything like that iOS iOS Shh. you you have I always to... say ISO I like ISO better I know but it's not right but I don't want to be right <laughs> <laughs> I like the look of what <laughs> no well, if that's wrong I don't want to be well, right I, you know I just we are going to have to eventually break down and tell that entire Vampiro story. You know that. We need like a whole podcast for that one. We are. And we don't have enough time on this one. No. We are nearing the end here, folks. And what we're going to do here at the end is that uh, we are going to look through the games coming out in like the next year or so. Yay. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to sit back. Well, actually, I'm going to lean forward. So I probably sound even more louder. I, I, I Since this is the first one and I've said, hey, we need to make sure we talk on the mics, but I've been like kind of back here a little bit. Both, right. Yeah, so I'm going to get like right up next to your ear. Get up in there. So, so these are the games I have listed January to March. This is on VG247.com that they just, they just, some of these have dates, some of them don't. So I'm going to look through here. Uh, January 12th, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8. I have no idea what's in that. It comes to PS4. Uh, all these HD versions of Kingdom Hearts, I'm starting to get confused on what's on what. You, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're probably going to have to look up yourself and figure out what's coming out. Um, the game I have pre-ordered, Dragon Quest VIII, Journey of the Cursed King, comes to 3DS January 20th. I can't wait for that to finally come out. It is a port of the PS2 version that is now going to be portable, and it has, it has an extra dungeon and some extra characters. The one thing that doesn't, that kind of sucks about it, is that it's not going to be 3D. Right. It doesn't have the, th- like, okay, so they made Dragon Quest VII, a complete remake, and that is 3D capable. This one is not. They're not going to put that in. Tales of Basiria, you just said yesterday you wanted a new Tales game. Yeah, yeah, and there it is. January twenty seventh on the PS four and PC. Um, Resident Evil Seven. Twenty fourth. On the twenty fourth, PC, PS four, PSVR, Xbox One. Uh, the game is completely pay- playable in VR. I've heard mixed. I've heard as you know, I've heard some people say it's great. I've heard some people say it doesn't work as well as you would want it to. Right. 
the complete first season of of Hitman. The way they've done this is, is completely different. How they've released the new Hitman game in like chapters, right? Kind of like how they like do like the Telltale games, right? But what they do is like each chapter has its own big massive map, and you can almost spend ten to twenty hours just playing on that one map, figuring out, figuring out different ways to do stuff. How far apart are the the DLC or, or, or the chapters? chapters? You know, yeah. I don't know. Uh, the game came out like this year. So, I moved. Yeah, sh- yeah, you moved the mic. I had to. I was shifted my way I was talking. It's okay. We'll get used to it. Yeah. Uh, Halo Wars 2 is a big game coming out February 21st on the Xbox One and PC. And then you got Zero Dawn Horizon on mm. February 28th. Mm-hmm. Well, March for, well... That's so, that's yeah, that's the UK. European February twenty eighth and for the US market exclusive to PS four. I think this is gonna be a big game. Really? And then you got the Kingdom Hearts H D one point five plus one plus two point five in March twenty eighth. I just said that yesterday about how I'm really mad about that. Nintendo Switch coming out in March in Outlast. Do you ever play that? I, I did not play Outlast. Outlast is a very unique game. You you don't attack anything. You're basically in the first one. You're running through an insane asylum, mm-hmm. and you're you're a journalist, and you're basically trying to capture what's actually going on there. And you oh can, wait, you can't attack. You watch me play it. Wait, Outlast was was that the camera thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was it? Wasn't it? Was that? Yeah, I think it was. Like where you had the, like the night vision camera, you had yeah. so much battery. Okay, I I played some of that. Yeah. That like that was a free PS South PS Plus Park. game. South Park Fracture, but whole. I'm excited for that. They are really doing some cool stuff with that, bringing back some of the, uh, the, uh, the old like tactics grid based style there. I'm really not seeing anything else through other than Mass Effect, obviously. Oh, yeah. Matt, oh, of course, Tekken Seven, that's actually coming out early this year. There's no date on that just yet. Mass Effect Andromeda early. That is slated for the spring. The rumor yes. is March 21st. Now we got into the spring. Going we into the spring. Persona 5, 5 did get yeah. pushed back into April. It was really supposed to come out in February. Uh, that's going to come out. I have that pre-ordered as well. I still haven't canceled my uh, so-called um, uh, uh, collector's edition. Right. I haven't. Uh, man, I need to. Because <laughs> I've said uh, I just don't have enough room, but uh, part of me doesn't want to. Ukulele is finally coming out. <laughs> on April 11th, this is the newer uh, third uh, third person platforming game from the guys that brought you Banjo Kazooie and Conkers. Right. And some of these guys are actually from that team. And everything I've seen about it, it looks great. It looks great. It plays great. I cannot wait. New Lego City game. Oh, uh, oh, and uh, is that Lego City Undercover? It's yeah. Undercover. Yeah. So that is the port of the formerly. Wii U exclusive coming to modern consoles and PC. Yep. Sonic Mania. That is the retro style Sonic game yeah. coming out uh, on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. I'm excited for that. I want to play that. Yeah. Cuphead. That is that one old school Mickey Mouse animation type looking game yeah. that we saw a few years ago at E3. It's exclusive to the Xbox One console, but it's also coming to PC. So, before we go into the ones that do not have, let's see if I can find it here. I'm still looking. Um, a game I'm really looking forward to, Star City. You haven't heard of this yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, we haven't talked about it. So, it was a... Um, what's it? Uh, it raised $14 million on... Um, the back me stuff, the Kickstarter, Kickstarters, and it so far what I've seen is it is mixing your space combat style. You can play this single player or multiplayer, mm-hmm. okay. And it is now putting in first person shooting into like first person piloting into resource gathering. It, it's basically everything you've ever wanted in any game mashed together. So you can get each element of each thing. So you can go and do like first person shooting stuff where you go into, you're flying through, you find a space station, you go in it, you run through it, there might be some stuff in there you got to kill, may not, you never know. Mm-hmm. Um, you pull out all the resources, you move on. You go back into the first person of the plane. It's very unique. It's basically Eve, but first person. Hmm. It looks interesting, no hard date, said sometime maybe 2017. Maybe. I will show you some gameplay of it when we're done here. 
I, I'm looking forward to that because, as you know, I used to be a big first person shooter person. I'm really into the space stuff. I, I find that really interesting. So, I've, obviously, with Kerbal, <laughs> mm -hmm. it looks good. Cool. It looks really good, and it's not on the list. I didn't see it on the list. So, the some of the older games we talked about getting remastered, the Crash, Parappa, Loco Roco, and Patapon are all slated for coming out. Uh, Next year, next year Nino Kuni 2 next year, okay. Uncharted DLC next year, of course. Guardians, Prey. huh? Oh, I just was saying, Prey. Oh, yeah, okay, that one game, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series. They're coming out with a Telltale series for Guardians. That's funny. Okay, this is Need for Speed title. Title. So, a new Need for Speed coming out, right? Next year. And you know, I, I, I don't see it on here yet, but I would not be surprised if, um, the if we get a new Assassin's Creed this year, Seasons of Heaven for the Switch. That's right. Yeah, I saw but that. Nothing. Trailer. Nothing's actually on there. It's just so Final it's, Fantasy Twelve, the Zodiac Age. That's yeah. the that's the HD remaster for yes, for is. FF Twelve. Battlefront Two is probably going to come out alongside with Episode Eight. State of Decay Two. State of Decay. I you know I really wanted to play the first one. On I it. do too. Uh, they do have it remastered for, but it's that's a exclusive to Xbox. I think they might be on the PC. Here's, a, here's one that I haven't really seen a whole lot for, but I'm interested. Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series. That's what I just said. Oh. Yeah. You well, weren't listening. I wasn't. Mike doesn't listen. Not, do, <laughs> not when I'm really into something. No, he, no, he was reading. He was trying to find some stuff. Phantom Dust Remaster for the Xbox One. I think I saw something on this. Days Gone, that's the new kind of zombie PS4 title that has all the running like zombie stuff. I still don't understand why they have The Last of Us Part 2 slotted for See, they have like not... Death Stranding, God of War, Spider Man. I don't think so. I don't think any of Metal those Gear things. Metal Gear Survival. Uh, we'll survive. Yeah, yeah. We'll try yeah, not we'll to. See. We'll, yeah. but we will try not to actually even talk about that. That is a, that's a sore subject for me. Okay, well. Um, I don't see it on here, but it did get revealed uh, back it? in October. Red Dead Redemption 2 is supposed to come out next year. Is it? I, I want to say I want to say I did, no, it's not on here. But I'm I want to say they did a trailer because they they just aired a trailer for that during Walking Dead. Yeah. So it's like hey, they've got to be thinking it's coming out in the fall. Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> Call of Cthulhu. Anyway, um, I said earlier my most look forward to game is Mass Effect, and then we'll and then we'll go from there. <laughs> um, I'm I'm with you on that. I I'm excited. I still need to play one and two. As I look around the room. <laughs> you know, I might know a guy that has those. No, I don't, I don't know anybody that has Are you sure a yeah, guy has yeah, them still? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Does he, does he have like every copy? Of, like, no, not every copy. Not every copy? I don't have them on the PC. Mm, okay. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> don't think. Maybe. Because <laughs> I've got them on PS3. Um, Horizon. Horizon. I've been really looking forward to that. I, it's unique. I want to play it, but at the same time, it's going to come out too soon. Like, I'm going to pick it up, and then we have the Switch, and then we have Mass Effect. It's like, it's going to be hard to really get into both of those. I think that I'll, I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not getting the Switch. So I think that I will probably get Horizon. No, and... Okay, then I'll get the Switch, and then we'll just switch off. Yeah. All, right. All right. Look what I did. So, buddy, um, we are reached the end of our show here. Do you? Do you have any like recommendations? I know we. I know I didn't say anything about picking one, but um, off, like off, off the cuff, do you have one? Off the cuff, I would say. I'm trying to any any games out there? Any games out there that people can check out? Any system? Any old system at all? What is that? Any old system at all? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look at my own games. That's what I'm looking at your games. I see how it is. Look at all my games. Pick something. Huh? You know, I don't... You know, I don't know. I, um, a lot of the... I mean, I've been playing a lot of indie games mm -hmm. and then trying to get into... Like, Final Fantasy, obviously, that's what I've been waiting for. Yeah. And... I don't know. I got one. You go first. Then. Indigo Prophecy. It's available on the PS2 and, yeah, it. and the Xbox. It is called Fahrenheit, I think. On one of the other consoles, or no, um, on one of the in like in the Europe and stuff, it is made by the same people who made Heavy Rain and Oh Nancy yeah, Souls. it yeah. is one of those like big story driven type games. It's a really fun game. It's it gets weird though, like like I was really into it and then it got weird. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. But 
Yeah, really cool. If you're really into story and making decisions and stuff, it's really cool. Tell you what, Outlast. Oh, yeah, we, okay, we talked about it. We talked about it, and now that I think about it, I might revisit it for... I mean, it's a very short game, mm-hmm. and it's, you know, you can download it on the PS Network. It's fun. Definitely. Well, we just had... I, You know, we did two files, and uh, our audience will hopefully not notice your little excursion, because I'm going to try and edit it out. Yeah. Because somebody has a really small bladder. I got a really small bladder. He has to go pee-pee. And I drank a lot of tea. Yeah, baby like tea. Baby like tea. And my little baby bottle. If anybody can make the reference to yeah, baby like tea. <laughs> if anybody can even reference that. Because I'm that is something that we thought of uh, remembered last night, me and Rob. Me and Rob... He still thinks that every now and again when he thinks about tea. Anyway, <laughs> then Mike, thanks for coming down. Yep. Thanks for coming down and talking. It's, it has been a little while. We are going to try and be doing this once a week. So these, the actual style of these episodes might change a little bit because we're not going to have as much news. We might pick, we might pick like, our, I can make up our own topic. Make up, like, hey, let's this week let's talk about the PS2. What can we say about the PS2? What can we talk about the PS2? Let me educate you on the PS2. Right. And maybe since I'm a yeah. No PS2 owner until yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. So, we might be doing that as well. We want to thank you for checking out this episode of the Game Addicts Podcast. And thank you for checking out us on everywhere that we are on the interwebs. Of course, as I do this episode, I have set up some of the stuff, but it's not active as I record this. So, I have to actually have to go back and I have to learn what what all of our call stuff is on there. So, by the time our next episode is up, all that stuff is going to be up and running, and okay. I'll, I'll know it. But for now, uh, since we're still on the JIC stuff, we'll say go check us out on the on the JIC podcast on Twitter, Journey to Comics on Facebook, Journey to Comics on Instagram, uh, on YouTube, Journey to Comics. That's where you can find a big, long playlist of all the other Game Addicts episodes there, including the ones that don't get released onto the main feed. And then, of course, if you go over to, I believe it is the uh, Game Addicts podcast over on Podbean, if you download us there, hopefully we'll be on iTunes soon. Google Play Music. And you'll be able to, all those episodes that are on that playlist are going to go up there as old episodes. So you'll be able to go through, cycle in, get caught up, and we're going to have our own RSS feed. Yeah. 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 So for Mike, this has been Brando. Thank you for listening, and we will see you later. <laughs>